it's me katie welcome back to the spotlight and welcome to 2022 i think i have actually already posted this year but still i hope everyone is off to a decent start this time of year seemingly people like to indulge in a bit of trend related content which is kind of funny because just because the clock ticks over it doesn't mean that all of last year's trends just suddenly disappear. Over the last few years now, TikTok has definitely asserted its dominance in having a say in what is popular at the time, whether it is TV shows, music, and of course, fashion. And with that, we've kind of seen this obsession with having particular aesthetics of the moment, things like cottagecore, e-girl, seemingly everything has to have a label. So today I thought we'd look into what is projected to be the top aesthetics for 2022. Honestly, a lot of these I'm sure we've kind of seen coming for the last nine, to three months because they don't just pop up overnight out of nowhere but I kind of confirmed my suspicions if you will by reading some articles from actual trend forecasters so I'll reference them down below in the description if you're interested. The first one I want to dive into is what I'm seeing the most conversation around which is probably because it has the most nostalgia linked to it which is of course the comeback of the Tumblr girl. My brain gets a little bit confused because I see a lot of people reference this as 2014 specifically, but I would say that the Tumblr peak era was more like 2009 to 2014. Obviously with such a wide time frame, there were a lot of trends to come in and out, but for the purpose of this comeback, definitely think the soft grunge. Your playlist would have to include at least Lana Del Rey, the Arctic Monkeys, and the 1975. This could also be considered the prime time for the hipster era and where a lot of those, not like most girls sort of tropes really got started. There was definitely an emphasis on party culture as well. Think very skins, which obviously wasn't the greatest influence for teenagers at the time. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of all the negative side effects this era sadly brought upon us. I just want to focus on the fashion so let's talk about some of our style icons of the time. Number one that pops into my head, Sky Ferreira. I used to reblog her photos like crazy the ultimate it girl in my mind. I already mentioned skins and of course Effie was a poster child for this style. Personally, I always loved Taylor Momsen's style as well. Everything was just a little bit messy, rough around the edges, definitely very effortless, which I think is why I never really pulled it off. Um, I'm definitely a tryhard. I overthink things, I like things to be planned out, I love a color coordinated moment, but around 2014 is actually when I started posting, so we have some godforsaken cursed images from that era. It is so bad, I want to give you a zero, but that's not possible, so I give you a one. A welcome to my capsule wardrobe of a 2012 a Tumblr gal. We've got denim jackets, denim skirts, a lot of lingerie inspired pieces and these ditzy florals, leather jackets, flannels, slouchy knitwear. I'm really starting to feel it now and I think the main piece that I want to incorporate into the look is this oversized leopard print coat because this is something that I have actually had in my closet since that sort of time period, I feel like I would have got this in maybe 2014. Since we're really covering up with the warm winter jacket, obviously the natural choice is to go with something ridiculously skimpy underneath. Since I'm really trying to embody that Effie energy, I have gone for some messy, dark, smoky eyes, a darker lip, and I feel like she was all about layering on a lot of long costume jewelry. Ideally, I would still own my Jeffrey Campbell leaders, but since I don't, these platform boots are gonna have to do. What do you guys think? Would you have reblogged me back in the day? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I feel like we were successful with the last outfit, but it still felt like a disservice to you not to break out the tennis skirt and have an American apparel tumbler moment as well. So I'll be throwing on some thigh high socks and other than that, you really need to keep it pretty simple for the styling. It definitely is just a bunch of classic pieces, which is why I feel like this never actually went out of trend per se, but perhaps we'll just see more people digging these out from the back of their closet. Originally, I was just gonna try and avoid the elephant in the room, but I'm hearing more and more people talk about it on TikTok recently, and it is kind of another offshoot of that Tumblr era. It's Twee, or at least what is now being referred to as Twee. I don't actually recall people calling it that at the time. Actually, maybe I need to look up the definition. 
You know what? This is not helping my confusion at all, but more or less the gist is Zoe de Chanel. It has a very retro 60s influence to it with colored and patterned tights, Peter Pan collars, ballet flats, things of that nature. Oh, another good reference would be Amelia Clark's character in Me Before You. Very mismatched and quirky. For a much more dialed down version, you have the likes of Taylor Swift. I don't know if I want to include her in this because I feel like this is closer to a more classic vintage style. <sighs> Oh my goodness. Okay, I think I've just had a realization that the updated version of this is the styling for Emily in Paris. Yeah, okay, everyone shat on this at the time, but let it simmer for a few months and now everyone's talking about Twee. Is this a coincidence? I realize after all the reference pictures you've just seen, this might seem like an odd choice to use as the base, but it's a trust the process sort of situation. Obviously, we're gonna have to add some color and some pattern. Originally, I was thinking some sort of patterned jacket or maybe a sweater vest, but I feel like a pattern on the top half is just feeling like too much. So instead, I'm gonna opt for some pattern tights. Since these are already so busy, I don't think I want to clash with another pattern. Instead, I'm just going to go for color blocking on the top half and choosing out colors that are already in the tights. So I've just finished accessorizing and accessories will always save your look. I think this purse was the perfect addition. The only thing is I wish I had a different color beret just to break up the amount of purple we have going on. And also I think it would be amazing if the Mary Janes were white just to really tie in the pop of the collar. In the end, I have a feeling that you guys might hate this one um, because it is a little bit more flamboyant than the traditional twee looks, which does lean more into like Emily in Paris territory, which is why I think I'm going to be crucified in the comments. Okay, I can't honestly sit there and say that I think twee is going to be the biggest aesthetic of the year, so I feel like I owed you another outfit. This is obviously a much more toned down version, more so just a continuation of the preppy sort of trends we've been seeing. Like I mentioned before, the sweater verse, the tennis skirts. As I'm filming this, I just watched episode three of Euphoria last night and I totally could see this in Lexi's wardrobe, so I think we're very much on track. Finally breaking free of the Tumblr shackles and moving on to what would be described as like a space age cyber sort of aesthetic. Once again, nothing new because these are themes that have been played out before. Space in general was definitely a hot topic in the 60s and fashion explored that. We see these futuristic elements come through in a bit of the mod fashion. And we even have style icons from this era like Judy Jetson, hello, and camp cult classic Barbarella. We saw these themes revisited once again in the late 90s to early 2000s, that turn of the millennium definitely had people thinking of futuristic styling. We saw it manifest with a lot of metallics, whites, blue tones, platforms and puffers, frosted makeup, a lot of new age tech accessories, and also like an obsession with plastic, hence the inflatable furniture trend. I am and forever will be a fan of all things tacky, so this is right up my alley. Seemingly more and more people are using camp as like a coping mechanism, so I could definitely see people getting on board with this. And you're probably gonna think I'm biased, but I feel like people are gonna take this in like a sci-fi anime character sort of direction, which of course has been done before and you can find some really amazing reference pictures from old Japanese fashion magazines. I've been a Fruits magazine stand for years and every year seemingly it just gains more and more popularity and with the unhinged fashion girlies gaining traction on TikTok at the moment, I definitely think we could see it peak this year and people really embrace the Harajuku styles that were popular like 20 years ago which makes sense because the trend cycle does work in 20 year intervals and I cannot tell you how excited I am for it. I'm kind of going off on a tangent because Fruits Magazine styling is in its own aesthetic, but if you guys want to see a whole video on it, I would be happy to because to me it is like the blueprint of everything I love. I already know you guys have been sitting there just waiting for me to pull out this shirt because I do it every goddamn time the word cyber or space comes out of my mouth, but no. 
Today's challenge is to step away from the Dido Shop shirt and see what else we can come up with. I have actually already had my creative juices flowing when I saw this particular image of Rosé. I'm obsessed with her leg warmers, so I've performed a bit of DIY surgery on this old silver puffer jacket I had to turn the sleeves into my own leg warmers. So this is definitely what I want to base the rest of the ensemble around. The other item I'm really feeling at the moment is this little thrifted zip up. I think the silhouette it creates and the details definitely lean into this theme perfectly. So with these two key pieces in mind it is time to just play connect the dots. I really tried to be a bit more adventurous with my makeup for this look so hopefully it's possible. I feel like it looks better when my eyes are shut though so that's a bit of an issue. I've already got this bodysuit on as my base. I really like the cutout details and also just the white mesh in general is giving me space age vibes. Since I did the blue shadow I thought it'd be cute to do a matching moment with the skirt but I'm not 100% sold on it yet. We'll see if it all comes together, I guess. Yeah, I just freaking love the shape of this so much. It is a bit of a bummer that it covers up so much of the bodysuit, but you know, it's just gonna have to take one for the team. It would be nice to have something to cinch in the waist a little bit just for an even more dramatic shape. I wonder if we can make this little crop top work and then the texture will kind of match in with the leg warmers too. I'm so freaking excited about this one. I think we hit the brief perfectly and it's definitely the sort of thing I personally would want to wear as well which also you have to peep the backpack just to add that extra layer of tackiness to suit me the inflatable 90s style I think I want to try and take some photos in this one as like a 90s commercial sort of style let's just strip things back a little bit something a bit more wearable perhaps, which is ballet core. And I feel like we could all see this one coming a mile away with how popular athleisure has been and more recently leg warmers as well. This is such a pretty and polished aesthetic. The color palette for this is very much baby pink, light grays, whites, creams. Personally, I think black could be really stunning for this as well, but when you're looking at the mood boards, mostly it sticks to the softer tones. We have some great movie references for this, Center Stage and of course, Black Swan. I feel like this can have two offshoots to it. You can either go for the more casual side of things where it's like, a warm-up dance practice sort of styling. This could feature leggings, leg warmers, leotards, I think a lot of wraparound and tie-up details. But the key trend piece for this, I think, will be the little shrug or knitted bolero situation. On the other hand, we could go for the more production side of things with costumey tutus or perhaps even what you would wear to a night at the ballet. I don't know. To me, this is more poofy, dramatic silhouettes. And I guess more so a continuation of things we've already been seeing, like the silky dresses and corsets. And a big takeaway for an accessories trend I think we're going to see a lot of this year is pearls. I don't know if this necessarily ties in with ballet core, but in my mind, the mood board fits. So this dress is our starting point. Admittedly, it gives a little bit more ice skating than ballerina, but definitely still workable. I don't have a full tie up wraparound top, but this is kind of like a built in one sort of thing that I think is still gonna work well. She'd be looking a little bit dowdy, but you know, a very easy fix, especially with this sort of fabric because you can just pull and tuck and you're good to go. Since it's quite a simple style, it is already time to move on to the footwear situation. Definitely gonna be throwing on these pink tights. I'm not sure how pink they show up on camera. I do wish they were a little bit more opaque. I'm trying to make a sock decision now. We have either the really slouchy, more in like the leg warmer family, or we have these ones which are a lace tie up sort of moment. Yeah, I'm definitely going with these ones because they match my only pair of shoes much better. Okay, I have just put on the final touches and I mean, you can't tell me it's not giving what it was supposed to give. I'm quite impressed with myself that I just pulled this one out of seemingly nowhere. I think it is super, super cute. Do I think this specifically is what we're gonna see everyone wearing? No, I do feel like it'll be in a more casual form, but this is really fun. The last aesthetic I wanna talk about is definitely something we've already been seeing throughout 2021, but I think it's just gonna to continue to build upon itself moving forward. And it's something that Mandy from Old Loser in Brooklyn has dubbed Avant 
apocalypse. Pretty much the subversive basic trend that we saw blow up last year, but reimagined through a maximalist point of view, which already is sounding right up my alley because you know I am definitely not a fan of the less is more mindset. But yeah, definitely something people have already been embracing with a lot of unique layering techniques super heavy emphasis on DIY and not just DIY, but like no so quick and easy solutions as well. We've seen a lot of people wear balaclavas, which fits in really well with this vibe and also a lot of mixing textures. Immediately I knew I wanted to wear these pants. They are just the perfect cargo, too many zip pocket sort of situation we're looking for. And then the top definitely falls under that subversive basics trend with the more unique angular cut to it. And also just all this extra kind of unnecessary <laughs> layers and strings, which I now have to figure out how to tie. So I'm adding this little half skirt because yes, Skirts over pants is coming in strong this year, trust me. Some sort of really deconstructed crochet or knit outerwear piece would work perfectly here. I can't knit myself and I don't have anything like that. So I'm gonna try and rework this super, super old Brandy Melville cardigan. It's still kind of on brand. We just need to pile on a few accessories. After adding not one, not two, but three belts, I think we've finally made it. I hope you enjoyed this sort of trend video. Let me know if you want to see another one with like my more traditional rundown of like certain things that are going to be trendy this season rather than just overall aesthetics. But let me know which ones you liked best this time around and if there's any you want to see me try in the future. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you around or maybe over on my Instagram or TikTok. But until next time, bye!